Good morning. So wonderful to see all of you this morning in the Lord's house. Amen. Let's stand this morning. We're going to worship the Lord.
give him praise hallelujah the lord he is good hallelujah come on we can do better than that come on let's just give him praise hallelujah let all your worry let all your pain let everything leave your body right now in the name of jesus and just give him praise because he is worthy he is worthy my praise is not uh, based on whether the election how it went my praise is not based on really how i feel my praise is not based on the weather my praise is not based on who's here and who isn't my praise is uh, based on the fact that he loved me and gave himself for me and i am a now called a child of the king hallelujah and he is worthy of my praise and worthy of my glory hallelujah Hallelujah. Turn to about two or three people around you and say, you look good this morning. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. Amen. One quick announcement is, is we, have, we have prayer meeting this Tuesday night at 7 p.m. So if you don't normally attend prayer meeting, I'm encouraging you to come. Uh, whether you pray 15 minutes, whether you pray an hour, it doesn't matter. If you pray five minutes, if you come in your work clothes and you want to pray, you're welcome to come pray. Because I really believe with all of my heart, the people of God better get on their knees and we better pray. This is not a surprise. This is all you'll hear me say about the election. This was not a surprise. God is still on his throne. It doesn't matter who is in office. You keep on doing that and I'll preach. <laughs> it doesn't matter who is in office. It only matters who's on the throne. I want you to let that sink in for a minute. It doesn't matter who is president over the United States. It only matters who is on the throne. Because he holds, oh, I feel his presence here. I had the Lord speak to me the other night. And he told me, he said, son, he said, this is not a surprise to me. He said, but my people need to quit putting too much emphasis on a man and know that man cannot dethrone me. Oh, I think we need to give him praise. I think we need to give him glory. They can't nobody go up and say, God, you got to get off your throne because he's eternally fixed in heaven. Heaven and earth, earth the earth is his, just his footstool. We're just little dots in the land, but ain't you glad I'm a dot that has been covered by the blood? Aren't you glad that I am somebody that he calls by name? Aren't you? I got honorable Sunday that honorable Sunday. They think they're going to do all these different things, but you will never dethrone God. You can do what you think you can do, but let me tell you something. There is not a law that can stand up to the Almighty God. There is not a commandment that man can put on his lips that can dethrone God. Ah, you could be seated. I'm telling you right now, I am not worried.
have the interpretation, please speak. By the Lord. By the Lord. We just everybody just kind of slip your hand up right now. Just slip your hand up and honor the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for your power. Lord, we know there is nobody that can move you. There is nobody that can shake the heavens like you. There is nobody that can speak one word and everything change in a moment. Only you. And you are the author and the finisher of our faith. Not man. Not man's laws. But Lord, we will obey you the word. We will obey and we will honor who is put in that position. Because it's the right thing to do. But I, for one, Lord, stand before a congregation today that anything that goes against your book, your word, I will not support. Because it is the word of Almighty God. We honor you. We praise you. In Jesus' name, we love you. Amen and amen. Thank you for being here this morning. I am looking for the Lord to do something great and marvelous in this place today. I feel his presence, his miracle working power here to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. God, it's time of refreshing from the Lord. And I don't want to get behind what he's wanting to do. I want to flow as he is flowing. So I'm going to do this a little bit different. I need my ushers to come on down this morning and we'll receive our offering. I want to encourage you this morning to give unto the Lord. I say this, and I don't say it repetitive because I want you to understand your giving is not, even though you put it in a Georgetown Church of God envelope, and even though we will do it for, use it for ministry here in this church, you are not giving to Georgetown Church of God. You are giving to the Lord. So if you give sparingly, the word says you will reap sparingly. But if you will give bountifully, you will reap bountifully. And I challenge you by the word of God in his presence that you give unto the Lord. Because let me tell you, I see everybody in this building right now with clothes on their back. I don't see anybody in here malnutritioned. And I'm sure you drove a car here in this church. And I'm sure you left a good warm house or a good cool house here the way you want it. That you slept in a good bed last night. You know why? Because he loves you. Why don't we show our love back to him and how we give and support the work of the ministry? Brother Darrell, would you pray with all from please?
standing here today you say I don't really know how to worship like everybody else well the Lord doesn't want you to worship like everybody else you say I feel uncomfortable let me tell you how the simplest way to worship the Lord is to either lift your hand and just say the simple words thank you Jesus. That's all you have to say. You don't have to learn how to shout. Shout in a cup. You don't have to learn how to bounce around and run around like some of us like to do when I'm feeling the energy of the Lord. I might bounce around a little bit today. But he don't want to hear what the person that beside you is saying through you. 
He wants the attitude of gratitude to be in your heart to say thank you, Jesus, for what you've done, what you're doing, and what you're going to do. That's the attitude of gratitude. You see, worship is all about attitude. Can I just stay here a minute? Worship is all about attitude. It's not the style of music. It's not even how they play it. It's about your attitude. You can't say, well, I didn't worship this morning because I didn't like the song they were singing. That's a bad attitude. Because Jesus is good no matter if they sung Sweet Home Chariot. Jesus is still good. You see, it's all about your attitude. If you're standing here today and you're saying, I wish he would hurry up and shut up and they would quit singing, they would turn the volume down and I could go home and go back to bed. You got the wrong attitude. That's right. Amen. But if you have the attitude that says, and I can tell who has the attitude and who doesn't, and more than me, God can. That's right. Amen. But if you've got the attitude, you come in and say, I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for Jesus. Amen. I... I wouldn't have a roof over my head, children to bounce on my knee. I wouldn't have money in my pocket. I could be in a foreign country somewhere begging and eating rice off the ground because I didn't have nothing to eat. But now I'm born in the United States. No matter what the election said, no matter what nobody else said, I'm still a citizen of the United States. Why? Because God deemed me to be born in the United States. But the United States don't control me. It's only the Lord. So I'm not giving gratitude for that. I've got the attitude that says, Lord, I give you all the praise. I give you all the glory. I give you all the honor because I wouldn't be who I am without you. Let me try it one more time. How many of you got to change your attitude and let's just worship the Lord for five for five seconds I want you to give the Lord the biggest praise offering that you've ever given him before if you have the attitude of gratitude five seconds come on somebody make the statement I'm, I'm, I'm going to get in this message in just a minute because it's a profound message from the Lord I heard somebody say that because of this election Brother Newton they're going to come in and steal our worship service well you can't steal worship this in my heart because I can worship him out on the streets you can shut the doors on the building but I still worship him on the street amen I can worship him in the deer stand. I was in a deer stand one time and, and didn't know it. And there was a buck standing behind me. And I was up there speaking in tongues as the spirit was giving the utterance. And, and I didn't even know the deer was standing behind me because I was in the tree worshiping the Lord for something he had done for me. See? And no, I didn't get the deer. It ran off. It said, I don't know what that guy's doing up there, but. God bless you. You may be seated. Give this praise team a round of applause. Amen for leading us into the presence of the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want to reiterate this again, and this will be the last thing I'm going to say. Because I said, I told my wife, I said, I'm not going to get hung up on the election. Because it really doesn't faze me. Because my God is still on the throne. But no matter what they say, no matter what they post, hear the word of the Lord. I feel the shokotane de Nebaia. You look to him and not to man. 
you hear me again, hear the word of the Lord. Look unto the author and the finisher of your faith, not to man's institutions. Because he is still on his throne. Give the Lord praise one more time. <laughs> Grab your Bible real quickly and turn to Ecclesiastes chapter 8. Begin reading at verse 4. Would you stand for the reading of the Word of God? I know I'm making you like a springboard. But praise the Lord. I keep you good and loose. And if you feel like running, you run. And you say you've already got your stretches in. Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 4. I want you to hear the word of the Lord this morning. Where the word of a king is, there is power. Who may say unto him, what doest thou? I want to preach this morning on this title, The Word of the King. Would you help me pray, Father, in the name of Jesus? With all reverence and all sincerity, Lord, we stand before you today. Because we know that you are still alive and well on your throne. We thank you because we know that you are with us today. and We are your people. We are the sheep of your flock. We thank you that we can call you Lord and Savior and King because that's what you are. We thank you for the word that you're about to deliver and we praise you in Jesus' name and the church said, Amen. Turn to somebody else and say you look even better than they did five minutes ago. The king in Old Testament period time ruled with autocratically meaning they ruled with unlimited power. Whatever the king said it was carried out whether they liked it or whether they didn't like it. Therefore, Solomon puts the emphasis on the word of a king that it has power. But notice that he also includes in his statement, Who may say unto him, What doest thou? Such a question in biblical times in the days of Solomon, if you ask the question, and approached the king with boldness and said, King, what in the world are you doing? Then I can tell you right now, you would be exiled or executed. One or the other. But that's not the king that I want to talk about today. I want to talk about our king. The message that I'm about to deliver to you, the Lord put in my spirit. That the word of our King, the Lord Jesus Christ Himself, has unlimited power and that He rules and reigns with authority. He is totally eternal, fixed in heaven itself. He is totally sovereign. He is totally absolute. He is totally wise and He is just and he is holy. Therefore, the word of our king holds much more value than any other word ever spoken. Somebody say amen. Look with me for just a few moments as we look as the king speaks and things begin to happen. It was by the word of the king that all things were created out of nothing. It was not a big bang theory. It was not a scientific explosion that happened in the sky. But rather it was when the king of all glory decided to speak, things began to happen. 
The Bible tells us in Colossians 1 and 16. He said, For by him were all things created that were in heaven and that are in the earth. Visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or power, all things were created by him and for him. May I remind you that everything good or bad in our life, everything good or bad in this country has a purpose in God's redemptive plan. Somebody say amen. It did not catch him off guard the other day. It did not cause him to go into a panic because God, who wrote Genesis, also wrote Revelation and everything in between. Can somebody give him praise if you believe that? It was by the word of the king that all things are preserved. How many of you know that Colossians 1 and 17 says these words, and you need to hear me this morning. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. You would not even be here sitting on these pews today if it wasn't for the word of the king. You wouldn't even be existing here today or have the things that you have if it hadn't been the uh, preserving power of the king. With one word of his voice, everything in your life can change in a moment. I want you to hear me this morning. With one word of his voice that you can go from poverty to the palace. With one word of his voice, you can go from the deathbed to, to running a marathon. With one word, somebody help me this morning. With one word of his voice, your life can be radically changed. You could be on your way to hell, but now you're heaven's child. I want somebody to give him praise for the word of the king. Hallelujah. It was by the word of the king that he destroys or he preserves Hebrews 12, 26 and 29 says this, Whose voice then shook the earth, but now he hath promised, saying yet, Once more I shake not the earth only, but also heaven. And the word yet once more signifying the removing of those things that are shaken as of the things that are made, that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. Wherefore, we receiving a kingdom which... Somebody help me. We receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved. Let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. May I tell you that God is not done in the world today. He has not been dethroned. But God himself, hallelujah, is shaking things up. And if you haven't been coming to church if you got whether you come on Sunday morning and I don't see you no more till next week I want to tell you you better step up your game honey because God is about God is about to shake some things up and he's going to wake some people up that those that are steady will remain steady and those who are not steady will get steady again hallelujah Oh, I feel his anointing in this house. By the word of the king, there was given an everlasting promise of eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Now whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. May I tell you today that without the promise from the king, we are dead in our sins. Without the promise of the king, we have no eternal life. But thank God for the victory that we have in the cross of Jesus Christ. Thank God that he loved me enough that he gave his only begotten son from me. Thank God that he loved me so much that he didn't leave me comfortless. He sent the sweet Holy Ghost. And then in John 14 he tells me, 
He said, ye believe in God, believe also in me. For in my Father's house are many mansions. And if it were not so, I would have told you. He said, but I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am there ye may be also. I not only have eaten no life hallelujah but I've got a mansion with my name on it I've got a door with my hanging tie that says Derek Morgan I've got a book that's up there in heaven that belongs to the Lamb of God that has my name written in it is your name in the directory is your name in the book God has already spoken it it's already there won't you be a part somebody give him praise hallelujah By the word of the king, there has been given a warning. First Peter 4 and 17 says, For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it begins with us, what shall the end of them that obey not the gospel of God? And if the righteous scarcely be saved. Somebody look at your name and say that means you've got to put some effort in it. I'm feeling like somebody said he sounds like an old fashioned guy. No, I'm a Bible guy. I don't believe in sugarcoating it. You got to live right. You got to do right. Some people say, well, I got saved when I was back when I was seven, eight years old in a Baptist church somewhere on the hill. And I've been living like a heathen, drinking and smoking and, and doing dope and pills and everything else. And I'm still saved. I'm going on. No, you're not. I feel a little boldness in this house today. No, you're not. My Bible tells me if the righteous who are coming to church and are sitting on the pews and are hearing the Word of God and praying and doing their best, that the Bible says, Sister Carter Ann, they scarcely can be saved. Then halfway ain't going to get it. Uh, I'm going to lose about half of you. But I have a responsibility to tell you that God is issuing a warning that it's time to get in or get out. It's time to get right and stay right. It's time to go 100% or don't give me nothing at all. It's time for the people of God and the children of God to realize that, that judgment is coming to us. And may I tell you, if you sit here today and you don't know Jesus Christ, you better get right, honey, because Jesus is about to come back in the clouds of glory. Hallelujah. By the word of the king, we, we see that all things that we have can change for the worse or the better in one word from our king. Therefore, our response, hear me today, is not forced. I can't make you change. I can't assume that you will change. It's a matter of your choice. You choose to believe the word of the king and listen and obey or you ignore every word that I'm saying to you today. No word from the king is to be treated as non-essential. Hear me today. Some people say the Old Testament doesn't have a place. I say, listen, it's the word of God from Genesis to Revelation. It all has a place. Listen what... Solomon said in verse 2, he said, I counsel thee to keep the king's commandment and that in regard as an oath of God. Do you realize when you said, Lord, I will serve you. I want you to be Lord of my life. And I will serve you. That's why when I lead people to the Lord, I want them to make an oath to the Lord. I'll serve you with all of my heart, all of my soul, and all of my mind. And many today are going back on their oath to God. And I'm telling you, God is calling your blank check, my friend. 
God is calling you out and telling you, listen, we think this thing, election, was the way it went and all the things that was done. Let me tell you something. God is not through. May I tell you that America is not found in the book of Revelation as existing anymore. You better understand that God, something is about to happen in America. And America will cease to be America, but God will still be on His throne. You say, well, America's always been. Let me tell you something, but God is before America. God is the I am. He is the author and the finisher. He is the first and He is the last. He is the one who who was dead and now He lives forevermore. Hear me, saith the Lord, for I will shake America. I will shake America and bring America to her knees. I will shake America, and America will never be the same, saith the Lord. But I say to you, out of the ashes and out of the dust will rise my church and revival will come in waves for my glory will be released upon the land. And I, the Lord, will reign supreme for I am the first and I am the last and there is no other God but me, saith the Lord of all glory. I am the Lord, and I have spoken. Heed my words, and come unto me before the end, saith the Lord. For I call to you today to renew your commitment to me. I call to you today out of love, for I am the Lord, and I love you. I gave myself for you. Come unto me and let me refresh you and renew you. Commit your life unto me and know that I, the Lord, reigneth supreme, says the Lord. Everybody on your feet, I'm not going to finish. I don't know what's going to happen. Somebody come to the piano. But something is about to hit America that has never hit America before. And if you ain't where you need to be with the Lord, or if you have lost your total commitment to the Lord, let me tell you something. May I be honest with everybody in this building? And I love every one of you, so I want you to take what I'm saying to heart because I love you. But the time we're about to enter, and thank you, Holy Ghost, you will have to be so committed to the Lord that you will have to part with family members that will lead you down the wrong path. 
you will have to give up things that you enjoy to be in the house of the Lord. You hear the word of the Lord. You hear the warning of the Lord today. I feel His anointing upon me. You will have to give up things. But for everything, everything that you give up, the Lord is telling me to tell you that everything you give up, I will give back to you double fold. But only when you commit to me with all of your heart, all of your soul, and all of your mind. So I say to you today, I don't care how long you've been serving the Lord. I don't care how short you've been serving the Lord. How many of you will come down here and stand in these altars and up this aisle today and say from this day forward, I recommit my life to you, Lord Jesus. I give my life to you over again. I'm starting afresh and anew. I commit my life to you. Let me tell you all over this building, don't be the one standing on the pew back there. Don't be the one standing back. Come and find you a place. Find you a place because the Lord God Almighty is in this building today. Don't be the one standing back there. I'd find me somewhere to get in this crowd. I'd find an aisle. I'd find somewhere to get somewhere. Somewhere where I could pray and I could show my son. If I don't move five foot, I don't, if I don't move a couple of feet out of the way, I would find somewhere right now to pray. You have heard the word of the Lord today. How you respond is on you. It, it ain't on me. I've been obedient to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. I've been obedient to Him in ways I've never been obedient to Him. I've never been used by Him to give out a word such as been given out in this place today. And I humble myself before the Lord. But I'm telling you, I would find me somewhere, whether you're standing back there or whether... I, I'm telling you, folks, this is a serious thing, more serious than anything you'll ever do in your life. I would bow my head or I would get somebody grab right there close to me that knows how to pray and I would, I would, I would, I would want them to pray with me. I would say, will you please tell me how to get to Jesus? And, Will you tell me how I need to recommit my life? And I'm, I'm going to have to give up some things. And how do I go about it? What do I need to do? It's that serious, my brothers and sisters. It's that serious today. We're in the days of preparation, the rapture. Listen, I'm hearing the Holy Ghost just speak to me. We're, the Holy Ghost just spoke to me and say, we're in the days of preparation right now. We're in the days of preparation, the rapture of the church. The rapture of the church is coming. Jesus is about to come back in the clouds, folks. This ain't a game. This ain't a game anymore. This ain't, this ain't an in and out thing. It's a, you, you, you better know that you know. All over this house, I want every head bowed. And those of you down here in the altar have already walked down here. You've already made your stand. But if you're standing back there, if you're sitting back there somewhere today, and you're not sure if the rapture was to take place, the Lord Jesus Christ coming back to get the church is what I'm talking about. He's coming back. And if you don't have your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life, if you have not confessed your sins and asked Jesus to be Lord of your life, you're not going. You'll be left here. And then the, it's going to be an unsuing process. And they're going to cry peace and safety. And then destruction will come. And great tribulation will hit this earth like never before. It's never happened before. But it's coming, my friends. But the church of the Lord Jesus Christ is going up in the clouds. Will you go with us? Will you go with us? You say, I want to go, preacher. I want to go. No matter where you're at in this building, I want to go, preacher. I want to go. I want to commit my life to Jesus Christ. I don't want to be left behind when the chaos ensues. 
I don't want to be left behind when mayhem goes, turns loose. I don't want to be left behind when people are dying left and right. I don't want to be left behind when the Antichrist is revealed and the devils and all of his angels take control of the earth. Well, here's what you need to do. Pray this prayer with me. If you're sitting here today, pray this prayer with me. Don't know how to, nobody have to know. I would prefer if you told somebody, but listen, it doesn't really matter. As long as he hears you, out of sincerity of your heart, pray this prayer. Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. And I need you. I want you to be Lord of my life. I've done a lot of wrong. I haven't been faithful. And I need you to save me. I don't want to be left behind. I don't want to be left on this earth. I want to be with Mama and Grandpa and I I want to be with those that have gone on to heaven. I want, I want to one day walk into that place called heaven. But I, I, I want to do that, Lord. So will you forgive me, Lord? Of, will you be Lord of my life? And I can tell you what I feel the Spirit of God having me to tell you right now. It's a big yes. He will be Lord of your life. If you prayed that prayer, He will be Lord of your life. He is now Lord of your life. You're now, your name is now written in the Lamb's book of life. You are now saved from your sin. Won't you rejoice? Oh, let the saints of God all over this house rejoice that our names are in the book. Now here's how you got to do it. Every time these doors is open, you need to be here. Hear me today. Every time these doors are open, I'm telling you, I've never felt the urgency of this. I usually say, well, if they come, they come. They don't, they don't. I'm telling you, you better be here. You better be here. You say, well, preacher, you just want the crowd. Well, if that's the way you're thinking, then when you're left behind, you can't cry out and say, well, the preacher didn't tell me. If it's any way possible, you need to schedule everything that you have so that you can be in church on Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night if it's possible. You Listen, those days, folks, of us just, well, Oh, we got a dinner party here, and I'm not being mean. I'm telling you, I'm from the urgency of the Spirit of God in my heart. Those days of saying, well, we got a birthday party this afternoon. We can't come. Those days ain't going to cut it no more. You're going to need every bit of God's power and His presence resting on you in these days to come because something is coming to America. And only, listen, only the 100% blood ball ready to go to heaven child of God is going to make it through it. And I got the attitude I'm going. Uh, there's not there's not anything that I can't schedule where I can't listen I'll work around I didn't even like missing church on Wednesday and I started to go to the church I actually did, was so convicted under my own and I had no choice but to go to court but brother Paul I almost went to my former church but I was scared I'd make a stink if I went in the doors because that's right around where I was at Because why? Because I want to be in church. I want to worship the Lord. And if anything takes that place, something ain't right with your heart. Hear this preacher today. If everything else can go above God, then He ain't first place. There's nothing more important in your life than serving the Lord. Hearing His Word. Worshiping Him. 
Church is, according to the book of Hebrews, is a dress rehearsal for heaven. They are a shadow of things that we're going to, Brother Tanner, where you These are a shadow, Brother Newton. These are a shadow of the things that we're going to do up there. And if you don't enjoy doing it down here, how are you going to enjoy it up there? Point is, you probably, if you ain't enjoying it down here, you're probably not going to be up there. Have I made it plain? I have never felt such an urgency, such a stirring in my spirit. And I don't say that because I'm a preacher. I'm saying that because I'm a Christian too. I could almost, thank you, Lord. I just had a glimpse in my mind. You can call it just my imagination if you want to. But I see old Gabriel just going over to the cabinet right now, and that trumpet that has it listed, the rapture of the church. I can see him, Sister Olivia, just going over towards that cabinet. I can see him, just a little glimpse there. I saw him going over, headed towards that cabinet, and it had rapture of the church. And he's fixing to grab that trumpet, pull that trumpet out, and it's going to sound. And the dead in Christ are going to rise first. And then we which are alive and remain. Where's Brother David? I believe it too. We're going to see the rapture of the church. After what I have heard from the Lord this morning, we are going to see the rapture of the church. And some people are going to be so... I'm, please forgive me. But some people are going to be so hard-headed, they'll show up for church the following Sunday, and they'll come in and there'll be no praise team, no greeters at the door. The parking lot, they'll say, well, I wonder if we're having church today. Yeah, we are in heaven, but y'all won't be having it here. It's a reality. Don't be hard-headed. Don't be hard-hearted. Hear the word of the Lord today. The word of the King that is spoken to us a couple of times in this service and spoken by His written word. Get ready. Stay ready. Because we're about to go up. Father, in the name of Jesus, I love you. Thank you for your word today. Thank you for speaking to us signs and wonders by your spirit thank you for these that are committed those who prayed may we all rejoice for you know who prayed you know who was sincere and I feel like there are some angels in heaven rejoicing because I feel like with some sincere praying going on in this place today In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Yeah, I think, Brother David, you had somebody that prayer cloth.